Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to talk about the autofocuser that I've just added to my Rokinon 135 millimeter lens. So let's take a look at it. So I'm here in the Primrose Observatory, and behind me I've got my Takahashi uh, FSQ-106, and I have the uh, Rokinon 135 lens piggybacked on top of that, and I've got it set up so I can move my camera and filter wheel easily back and forth between the, uh, the Takahashi and the Rokinon. So let's talk a little bit about the Rokinon 135 and why I bought it and how I use it and most importantly how I mounted it. That I bought it in uh, 2023, so about a year ago, and I bought it as kind of a lark. Uh, it showed up on an Amazon Prime special and I thought, well, you know, I've heard quite a bit about it. It'd be interesting to see uh, how it works. So I bought it not really knowing what to expect or exactly how I was going to use it. Uh, and I have been pretty pleasantly surprised. It really does a nice job for, for what it does and for the price. Uh, I planned to piggyback it onto my uh, Takahashi FSQ-106, which uh, is kind of an old picture with a, a mess of wiring on there. But what I wound up doing was replacing the guide scope on top. And initially, I attached it using uh, just a filter drawer adapter uh, that had a Canon EOS lens mount on it, so I would attach the filter drawer to the back of the lens, and then I could just screw that onto the front of the uh, ASI 6200 series camera. Uh, and I mounted the camera onto the uh, top rail using this ZWO camera ring. So these come in different sizes depending on whether you have a, you know the large or small body style. Uh, but it clamps, there's just a little bit of a depression uh, in this area of the camera and it clamps on just like regular telescope rings uh, and it, it worked okay. Uh, the problem was you had to kind of take everything apart when I wanted to move the camera back onto the uh, Takahashi. So the way I use it, I move the camera between either the uh, Rokinon 135 or the Takahashi. So what I found, and this is a fairly new addition from uh, ZWO, is <clears throat> they now have an EOS adapter that is designed to attach to their uh, filter wheel. So this just screws into the, uh, the 54 millimeter threads on the front of the filter wheel, and then it presents a Canon lens mount, so you can mount a lens right to the uh, the filter wheel. Uh, you do have to, with, with this arrangement, uh, you do have to take the tilt plate off the camera. And that works real well. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to move the camera back and forth and it keeps everything the same between the... <clears throat> I can take the camera and filter wheel right off of the uh, lens and put it on the Takahashi or I can swap the color and monochrome camera and filter wheel between the Takahashi and the plane wave so I can move stuff around easily. The problem is the filters are not parfocal, meaning that they focus at different points. Uh, the two main filters I use with the color camera are either clear glass or an Optolong L Enhanced. <clears throat> now without the clear glass filter, there is so much focus shift that the autofocus in the Takahashi uh, would get lost. You could either focus on one or the other, but it couldn't go back and forth between the two. On the monochrome camera with LRGB SHO filters, uh, you had to either focus for the broadband or narrowband filters, but they were too different to be able to focus together. So that meant I really needed to look at some sort of a focuser, and that meant a different mount for the system. So just to show you the difference. Uh, this is with the clear glass filter. This is with the uh, dual narrow band or the L enhance. And at this scale that doesn't look horrible, although you can certainly see that there's a difference. But when you zoom in even a little bit, the, 
the clear glass or you know, luminance data looks nice, uh, the L enhance is definitely out of focus. And you, know, you can focus one or the other, but not both. So that led me to the uh, astrodymium, I guess that's the way they pronounce them, ring system. It's a uh, looks like a 3D printed system. And you've got a front ring and a back ring, and they're just a little bit different uh, inside diameter to fit right over the lens. And they're designed specifically for this lens. Uh, it has a couple different mounting points, so you've got a you can have a handle or a mounting point at the top if you want to put like an ASI Air on top. <clears throat> Most importantly, they have this mounting bracket for the uh, ZWO EAF, and it comes with the little. Uh, sprocket drive that goes onto the shaft, uh, the sprocket belt, and even this little sprocket adapter that uh, clamps onto the lens. So everything comes with it uh, other than the, fil the focuser itself. And once that's installed, uh, it was actually pretty easy to install. You, uh, you have to put the rings on in the right order. As the lens, the front and back inside diameters are different. So you do have to think ahead a little bit. Um, also, you have to put the, um, there's it's like a clamshell, two pieces of, uh, for that geared drive that goes around the focuser. Uh, that you need to put on before you mount it in the rings. And you also, of course, need to put the, uh, the drive belt around the lens before you put it in the rings. So you have to think ahead a little bit or you, or you wind up taking it apart and putting it back together a second time. But once you get that done, uh, it was pretty easy to find a spot to mount the camera and filter wheel onto the, the top rail of the Takahashi. I can't just unscrew the camera and filter wheel because there isn't enough uh, vertical clearance for the filter wheel to go around. But the way it's mounted, I can very easily just release the lens mount, take the uh, camera filter wheel <clears throat> and lens adapter off, and then just take the lens adapter off of the filter wheel, uh, put it back on the lens, put a body cap or a lens cap on the back of the lens, screw the camera onto the telescope, a little bit of difference in the RA balance, and I'm good to go. So it really makes switching back and forth a, a pretty painless process. Uh, since I do have two focusers, I do have to move the USB cable from the focuser on the Rokinon to the focuser on the ZWO. <clears throat> the other good thing is that because I'm, I'm working remotely, so all this has to work remotely with no one around, I do use Voyager, and Voyager, uh, the way it works is you can develop profiles for different systems. So I have a profile for the uh, Takahashi uh, 106, and I have a separate profile for the Rokinon 135, and that keeps all of the uh, focus settings, uh, everything that's unique about those two settings. So when I move the camera from one to the other, I just switch the active profile from, uh, for instance, I just moved it from the 135 back to the, the Takahashi. I just change the active profile, and I'm good to go. So that's how it works out. Uh, I found it real useful. Uh, I do like the Rokinon 135 uh, with a full frame camera. Uh, the very corners uh, do have a fair amount of, it looks like astigmatism. I'm not sure if it's coma or astigmatism, but it looks more like astigmatism from, from the examples I've seen. So you generally you're gonna crop it down a little bit, especially cropping out the, the very extreme corners. Uh, other than that, I've been real happy with the performance. I am using it at f5.6, uh, so it's stopped down a couple stops from wide open, and that does improve the star shapes, especially in the corners. Uh, but overall, I would, uh, <clears throat> I would recommend it. It's a, a fun little addition, and if you're working you know, right there with it, it's not too difficult to focus it, and even if you change filters in a filter drawer, it's not too difficult to refocus. But when you're working remotely, you really do need something that supports an autofocuser and the astrodemium rings uh, have worked out well for me. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you like videos like this, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel so you get uh, 
notified whenever we drop a new video. Uh, some are tutorials on processing in Photoshop and PixInsight. Others uh, occasionally are a little bit more gear oriented like this one. So with that, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.